to it guys, happy Sunday with Satan. <laughs> Alright, so we are going to jump right back into the old craft. And it just keeps getting more interesting, so here we go. I love it. This time change is really messy. I mean, it's screwy. I feel really screwed up and I, I don't know, I just, I hate it. I, I don't know what is going on. I don't know what time it is. I don't even know what day it is, half the time. But anyway... Alright, now, in 1959, Bourne says that English was aged about 40, and she describes her as the aristocratic witch. I like that. Uh, the aristocratic witch. I like that. <laughs> so she had um, <clears throat> honey-colored, wavy hair, green eyes, like a cat. Oh, wow. I like that. Long, tapering fingers, and spoke with a cultivated voice. Mm, I like that, too. Is this Eartha Kitt? No. no. She also ex um, executed a strong sexual attraction. And the male members of the coven, including Gardner, were fascinated by her. Of course he was. He was a sex addict. Alright, when she danced skyclad during the coven's rituals in the witch's cottage at Beckett Wood and made wild vocal calls, Bourne says owls came from miles around to sit on the roof and answer her. I like that. I love that. I love my owls and birds and all of those. Strange shapes and shadowy forms also appeared in the circle in response to her calls. Now, when Bourne drew attention to this, English just laughed at it and said it was real witchcraft. Alright, so... Hmm. So Lois Bourne and um, Monica English became friends, and they met socially together with Cotty Berland. Now, English belonged to the hunting and shooting set in rural Norfolk, and her husband, a former Royal Air Force officer, was the master of the local hunt. Seems good, right? Bourne eventually visited her um, old manor house in a small village near uh, Kingsland, and at the back of the house were stables for horses and kennels for a pack of foxhounds. Now, after his, this visit, Monica English revealed that she secretly belonged to a local coven with an unbroken tradition of over 200 years. Really. I hope that's true. So she had apparently divorced, or discovered, discovered divorce. She discovered the coven um, after moving to the area in the either the 19, 1953 or 1954. So, the, yeah, the date's obviously not definite. Now, English told Bourne that she had been instructed to join Bricketwood to find out if it was um, a threat to the old ways. I like that. I do like that. I like her sneakiness of going into that coven with Gardner there. Ugh, I can't stand the man. To see if it was a threat. So, as her parent coven had become um, concerned over Gardner's love of publicity... Gardner was... No. Just no. That's it. That's all I gotta say. It's just no. So, uh, they believed that it was bringing the craft into, um, disrepute. So, Lewis Bourne was eventually asked by Monica English to join the Norfolk group. So, her recollection... Recollections of it are very different from those of Cotty Berland, and she makes it sound very grand. So English invited her because she said that Bourne would learn a lot more about witchcraft because what um, Gardner taught was the, okay, quote, the shadow um, and he does not possess the substance. That does not make any sense. To what, what was Gardner trying to say? He was trying to, I don't know what he was trying to say. I think it was probably, a, I, I don't know what kind of drugs he was doing, so whatever. He's not even important. Now, at first, Bourne turned down the offer, but after Gardner died, she accepted the invitation and was inducted at Halloween in 1964. All right, so yeah, I totally understand why uh, yeah, you would leave that cover. You would join the coven, um, or group, or, you know, whatever group, if that man was taken out of the equation. Don't like that man. Never did. Even when I was young, reading books with by him, and you know, it's just something about him. I was like, oh, I feel, I just this gross feeling made me made me feel gross. I honestly think I actually took a shower. So now, at that time, Monica English was the magistra of the coven and was assisted by a man Bourne calls a Bertman, 
and that's not his real name. So who was the magister and a wealthy businessman? Although they were the primo, um, primo facto leaders, the eminence of Gris behind the coven were an elderly couple known as the Lord and the Lady. That sounds way too Wicca-esque to me, Lord and Lady, I don't like that. Although Lois Bourne says that the group had over 30 members, that's really, really big. That's a really large coven for that time. A large number for a rural group, yeah, it is. Not everyone attended each meet, although every member was expected to convene at the four grand sabbaths. So, that's interesting. Alright, now, the coven was uh, geared towards the uh, celebration of the agricultural year, and while the goddess was acknowledged, it was the horn god who had ultimate power, and that's kind of how it is in traditional craft, Cornish craft, so yes, the, the horn god is more pro dominant than the goddess, but a lot of us do incorporate the goddess a lot more now, so, I mean, I do, with Hecate, but that's it. So, another source who claims inside knowledge of the coven, but wishes to re remain anonymous, has told this writer that horses were an important totem animal to the group, and that they worshipped the Celtic horse goddess, Epona. What are we at Pony from? Epona. Epona? Epona. Epona. Not sure. Now, he claimed that when the coven met outdoors, the members rode to their meets on horses, and the animals were included in the rituals. I hope that they were not sacrificed. I, I don't think so. I really honestly don't doubt that. The horses, anyway. Um, according to my source, he says, the children of the original members of the coven still kept it going today. So that's really interesting. That is really, really interesting. The Norfolk Coven. I just wonder. I wonder where where these people are. I would love to, you know, meet some of them, maybe. A few of them. A couple. I'm glad Gardner's not alive today, so I did. <laughs> I would definitely tell him what I think of him. But yeah, I just don't, I don't like him. He's... He's weird, and he's, he's creepy, and he's got, like, a pedophile. He, he's got this pedophile, like, uh, bleh. Yeah. Don't think about him. Alright, let's do some coffee talk. I'm trying to fix my graphics down here, so if you go to mrscamber.com, enter my code, R-Y-A-N-E, in all cap locks, you will get 10% off store-wide. And I'm really glad that you guys are sending me pictures of your stones that you're getting. It's not just for the obsidian necklace, too. You guys can do anything in the store with my name and get 10% off. It's really interesting. It's really interesting because they have a lot. They have a lot of stuff that I really want and that I'm going to buy. Maybe. <laughs> oh, okay. Come on, YouTube. Be nice. Come on. Oh, on the black chair. That's what I was trying to tell you guys about because they have a really good interview with... Um, there's one with Cecil Williamson and there's one with Gemma Gary and there's one... It's just a lot of traditional craft. So, it's your old-time craft. And these people on there are pretty amazing. It's just a podcast, so, I mean, but it's still informative, and you learn a lot. You can take in a lot and digest a lot. And I like it a lot. All right, coffee talk. Let's see here. Why is it not... Hmm. I wonder if they've been doing a lot of work around here lately. I kind of have this feeling that they've been doing a lot of work on, like, I don't know, power lines, etc., whatever, etc., etc. So I think that's what's going on. I don't know. What's with, what's with the internet? Wow. Okay. Um, your names are popping up. There we go. Norse Moon. Hi. How are you? The older cards, bro. Yeah, I totally agree. I do. I, I love it. I love those older cards. They have so much energy. So much more energy about them. It's just, I don't know. They, yeah, it's just something about them. Don't know, but I love it. Witchy boy. Hey. Hi, you. 
Right, and don't push yourself too hard. Okay, okay, I don't. I do not push my... I do, I do push my... I do push myself. I have to push myself because of um, conditions. So, there is a point where I do just collapse for a minute and just rest. And that's every night. <laughs> if you need to cut back on uploads so you can sleep and be healthy, do it. Oh, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm healthy. None of us want you to sacrifice your own health for our entertainment. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm very honest, and I would tell you guys if, you know, I, I tell you guys when I need a break, and et cetera, et cetera, so I'm all right right now, so it's no big deal. Thank you, though. Thank you. I feel the care, the, the caring energy. I love it. All right, also, I'd like to think that the only reason the old coven would be would have betrayed one of their own is because they had some information we don't exactly or at least haven't discovered yet. Yes, otherwise I'm with you. It seems wrong and out of character for such a close, closely woven brotherhood. Great video is always loving all of this. Thank you. That's really, yeah, I mean, why didn't they save him? I, I, that's still, I'm still wondering, why did they not save King Charles? It was evidently, you know, um, his time impending. So. Okay. Where did I go? Sorry. Sorry, witchy boy. <laughs> Alright, um, Ira, Ira, Anak? Hi. Hat man's a name used for several things. Yeah, it's totally, it's an umbrella term. But I personally think there is one form which deserves it. A shadow person, but never moving, like a void in the shape of a hat and a coat. On a tall form, I felt similarly still in the form of remote viewing. I think the hat man is a uniform used commonly by a cabal, basically, in my honest opinion, Illuminati. I do not believe the, in the Illuminati at all. So I don't think that, yeah, I think the hat man, the slender man, whatever, um, I think it's just something that we project onto, um, and because it only happens at nighttime, so psychologically we are projecting um, from our psychology, from, literally from our brains, we're projecting what we want to see in shadows so that would be you know the better the of the two so illuminati there is like nothing there right there so it's like okay we have scientific psychological proof of projection of what we want to see on something like may our minds making order out of chaos so the bushes at night you can you know it could form into anything the trees could look like the hat man so we have uh right here we have the illuminati that's really nothing and then we have you know our psychological proof and scientific proof so i i just i can't go along with the illuminati uh-uh i i do not believe in the Illum illuminati at all <laughs> if it was there i would already be joined you know so yeah all right um uh, er, ira ira oh my god I hope I'm saying that right. The older cards were made with more care. They were. They were made with a lot more care. And it was just, they have this, just, each card is just so artistic and just beautiful. The Japanese have a term for the spirit a creator imparts on the art, on their art. That energy gets really thin when a machine does it. I think they get better with use, though. I love that. I love that. I do love that. Agree. Okay, or, um, Ira, Ira, Ira. Oh, God, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Okay, either he had been deemed a universal threat, or Cromwell chose politics over folk. I think he actually chose politics over folk. My girls have been bitching about spring forward all weekend. It sucks. I hate it. It is so stupid. It shouldn't happen. Mm -mm. It messes with your phys physiological body and your psychological mind, and it sucks. Anyways, all right, um... Ira, or Ira, Ira, I think, I hope. I'm sorry, I'm butchering it, I know I am. The fancy covens are all, covens are always deeply jealous of cunning folk, probably like you or sis. Thank you for sharing uh, histories, a good work, an unselfish one. I love it, I love all of this. I love the history of everything. Especially, you know, of our, you know, craft, our, our you know, our descendants, you know, we're descendants of, you know, da 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 da, you know, whomever, whatever. But yes, aw, thank you. I do, I love this one. The Children of Cain is probably the best book that I've read so far. All right, now, Gustavo, my brother, hi. Hello, have a great night. Um, I did. I did. Hi, Careless. 
Love from Mars. How? Oh, hi. Hope you are doing okay and staying safe. I am. I'm doing good. A lot better. Alright, Warrior Girl. Hi, Ryan. I answered your question about the cards yesterday. I never... I never had a reading done, but when I watch you do readings for people, I feel the older deck has more energy. I can feel it. There, See, a lot of people can feel that, and I just wanted to know. That was just something very curious. I was very curious about that. Take care of my friend. Oh, take care of my friend. Bye-bye for now. Aw, thank you. All right. River of Souls. Hello, are you new? Welcome. Oh, wow, I would have never th even thought of this question. What an interesting one. I do. I like it. I like the... Yeah, I don't know. They just have this energy that's been built up around them forever. Like, you have your altar. I've had my altar here for, like, 21 years. <laughs> this same altar. So, it's like, it's just... You build up so much spiritual energy, it literally becomes a portal to your ancestors, what I think. To source, whatever you want to believe in. God, goddess, spirit, source the all, whatever you want to call it, uh, Shirley McLean. wow, have you guys ever watched any interviews by her? She's out there, I thought I was out there, she's out there. Um, she calls it Source, so she believes in the Source, or the all, which I agree with. <laughs> Some of her beliefs, I mean, are, she's not hurting anybody, so that's just good for her, but wow, I love her. <laughs> Love her to death. Very good woman. Hi, my Tina J. How are you? Natural spirit. It has been so long. It has been years. I hope you're well. I really, really do. Everybody's... It's, a lot of old people are coming... A lot of older, you know, um, people that have been, you know, subscribed are coming back, and I love it. I think it's great. Skyly Sullivan. Hi, my love. Oh, I love you. I love you all. You guys are amazing. Let's see. Sheila Nagel. Hi, love. Um, who else? That's it. That's it for today. Alright. So. Well, guys, I hope you have a good day. And I hope you guys enjoy this little bit of, uh, history. So, um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And I love you all with all my heart. Please be safe. Stay healthy. And all my love. All the way from Venus. Always, of course. All the way back down. There we go. I will see you guys tomorrow, and I love you all very, 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 very much.